Okay, in this example, um, we're given a function uh, represented by a graph, and uh, we're asked to find uh, the domain and range uh, of this function. So we've already seen uh, several examples of finding the domain of uh, functions uh, represented by formulas, and uh, but we can also uh, represent functions by graphs. Uh, so in this example, uh, we're trying to determine the domain from looking at a graph, but also the range uh, as well. It's sometimes difficult to uh, determine uh, the range uh, of a function that's uh, represented by a formula, uh, but that's somewhat easier to do uh, if the function is represented by a graph, uh, which we'll see in this example. So um, recall that the domain of a function uh, is the set of numbers that we can use as um, input to the function. Uh, that will result in uh, meaningful output values. Um, and in most cases, a meaningful output value just means a real number output value. Uh, and the range of a function is the set of um, output numbers um, <clears throat> from a function. So let's start uh, first here uh, by trying to determine the domain here by looking at the, uh, by looking at the graph. So... Um, we want to find that domain, and when I find that domain, I'm going to express that uh, set of domain values as an inequality. Keep in mind that the domain of a function is a set of numbers. It's not just a single number. So um, if we sort of uh, uh, look at the uh, graph here from left to right, uh, we can immediately see that we cannot use um, any number less than minus 5 uh, as input uh, to the function because if we try to use a number less than minus 5, for instance minus 6, uh, we won't be able to look at the graph and determine a matching output value. So clearly uh, minus 5 is going to be a boundary value for uh, the domain of the function. And likewise over on the right hand side of the graph um, we can't use a number larger than 5 as input uh, to the function because again uh, we wouldn't, uh, since the graph doesn't extend uh, to the right of 5 along the x-axis, we wouldn't be able to find a matching output value uh, for it, numbers larger than 5. For instance, if we try to use 6 as input, we won't be able to find a matching output value. If we try to use 7 uh, as an input, we won't be able to find a matching output value. So um, likewise, uh, positive 5 uh, is going to be a boundary value um, for uh, the domain of this uh, function. So we already have a pretty good idea uh, that the domain of this particular function is going to extend from minus 5 um, on the left uh, up to positive 5 on the right. Now, the only real question uh, that remains is, um, is minus 5 itself part of the domain? Uh, is positive 5 part of the domain? Um, and, but the graph has been drawn now uh, in, in a user-friendly way so that we can answer that question quickly. Uh, what this open circle tells us is that although minus 5 is a, a lower boundary value uh, for the domain of this function, minus 5 itself is not included in the domain. So we cannot use minus 5 uh, as input to the function. That's uh, the meaning of that open circle. On the other hand, however, uh, because we have a closed circle here, at this upper boundary value 5, positive 5, then that tells us that um, indeed the uh, domain stops at positive 5, but that we can use 5 uh, as an input to the function. And in fact, uh, if we use 5 as input to the function, uh, the matching output, it looks like, it would be uh, 0. So minus 5 cannot be used as input, although it appears the matching output would be minus 2. That open circle tells us that in fact, minus 5 is not part of the domain. But on the other hand, 5 is part of the domain. And the domain would include all numbers then between minus 5 and 5. Uh, uh, any of these numbers, if we use any of these numbers as input to the function, we'll be able to find um, a meaningful uh, matching output value. In other words, a real number matching output value. So um, let's write this uh, domain down. I think we can uh, write it down uh, as an inequality. In fact, I know we can write it down as inequality. Uh, our domain is going to include... Um, uh, uh, numbers x that are uh, greater than uh, minus 5, but not including minus 5. So we wouldn't say that x is greater than or equal to minus 5. But um, uh, we want uh, domain values that are less than or equal to uh, positive 5. So our domain would be all numbers x between minus 5 and 5, uh, not including minus 5, although that's a boundary value for the domain. Uh, but including positive 5. All right, now um, 
let's see if we can determine the range. And we're going to determine the range now in a very similar way. Um, but um, we have to be a little bit careful here in determining the range. It's very tempting uh, as a student to look at these um, uh, um, left and uh, right hand endpoints here of the graph and try to use them to determine the range just like we did the domain. So you may be tempted uh, uh, to think that the uh, range begins at minus 2. Uh, that's, that would be the uh, lowest um, uh, output value from this function. And that the, um, since that's the um, y coordinate that corresponds to this uh, uh, point, uh, this left endpoint of the graph, uh, up to the y coordinate that corresponds to this right endpoint of the graph, which is 0. So you might think that the range is um, y values between minus 2 and 0, but clearly that's not the case. Um, we have range values as high as um, positive 4, uh, since 4 is the maximum or appears to be the maximum output value uh, for this uh, function. And we also have output values as low as negative 4. Uh, minus 4 appears to be the minimum uh, output value uh, for this function. So don't have your attention drawn to just these two points just because um, they're the endpoints of the graph. In fact, the range of this function extends from uh, uh, minus 4 on the y-axis all the way up to positive 4 uh, on the y-axis. Now, um, it's not as clear uh, if uh, both 4 and minus 4 are actually part of the range or if they're just boundary values of, on the range. Uh, so we just have to make an intelligent guess here about that. So I'm going to assume that um, both minus 4 and positive 4 are included in the range. So I'm going to write the range down as um, values y, uh, for y that are greater than or equal to minus 4. Those would be output values from this function. And uh, then up to uh, values for y that are less than or equal to uh, positive 4. Um, if I had written... Uh, uh, less than here and less than here instead of less than or equal to uh, in both cases. Um, I, that probably also would have been considered correct um, because it's not quite clear from the graph uh, if really 4 is part of the uh, range or just a boundary value in the range or if minus 4 is part of the range or just a boundary value in the range.